Hi, I'm Jin, and this time we're going to look at another project that I built using the cluster technology. This is mostly a stress test. You can see they're all spawning at the top and despawning at the bottom. And so this really stresses the, uh, the system. You can see that I've got nine other fountain sets here. Each fountain is running on a different server. The cubes that they're spawning are all being hosted on that server. And you can see that the cubes are all bumping into each other, acting with physics as if they were on the same server. Hopefully the smoothness is coming across. My laptop isn't great, so I can only hope and check the video afterwards to see that this actually looks as good for you as it does for me. I've separated the fountain sets by so much space because the client has a bit of trouble rendering too many cubes at once. They are using instanced static meshes, but still gets to be a bit of a load on the client if there's too many. Okay, so here we are in the project. I've got the game mode. Here are the types for the cluster to be aware of. You've got the player, you've got the cube, and you've got the floor. Just like before, we have our subclasses some parameters for setting up the, um, the fountains and the grid of fountains and the grid of the grid of fountains <laughs> uh, spawning functionality the cluster overrides and the basic types so here I'm using command line getting some parameters so you can specify that at runtime. Here's our setup of a cluster. We're just telling the cluster what the different types are, how to deal with them. Here we're spawning a fountain. This is the uh, distributed spawn functionality. Uh, this function sets up the parameters and then calls the distributed spawn with type floor. And that's going to spawn all those black floors on the, in the space. Each of that, those black floors are essentially a fountain that are then going to spawn cubes on the same server that the floor is on. Here's the other side. Obviously, we're only distributing spawn on the floor, so we make sure that's the case. We read in the parameters, and then handle spawn fountain is a blueprint function that we'll get into. Here's just a little something I did to um, test the global message functionality. This is when a um, when a fountain is spawned, this is called 
to let everyone in the cluster know that there's a fountain there. They don't actually do anything with that information, but it's really just a test. And then this handles the message that the fountain was spawned and uh, it, it just prints a string. I'll show you that in here. Here's the game mode. So up here, we've just got our begin play. It's just indicating what mode the server is in, whether it's a master, a worker, a gateway, or it's in standalone mode, which really means it's just a standard dedicated server with no cluster functionality. Here's a uh, event that gets called from inside the cluster when the world is ready to be set up. Only the master cares, and so he figures out the fountain grid, goes through all the fountain uh, locations, and then does a distributed spawn, which we saw here was here, spawn fountain. Here we spawn the fountain. This is what gets called on this side here. Handle spawn fountain on the side that's actually doing the spawning. And you can see, does the spawn, the parameters. Here's that declare fountain spawned. And then here's the like I said, we're only just printing out on the remote sides that, hey, we got a message saying that fountain was spawned. Here we are spawning a new player. Pretty straightforward. I, it's not necessary. Um, you know what, maybe it actually is because this is a regular pawn and not a character. You don't have to do this with the characters. But I'm guessing I did this for a reason. This was a long time ago that I wrote this, so kind of going by memory. But yeah, pretty sure that's the case. All right, so I can show you the cube. Um, actually, show you the floor first. It's got its uh, cluster functionality. It's really simple. I mean, these floors just sit there and do nothing. Here we've got the uh, instant static mesh stuff. It's all, I did that in C++. And it is this is cube. <laughs> Sorry. The floors don't use instant static meshes. There aren't enough of them. And they're really basic. The floor doesn't do anything too special because it's really just sitting there doing nothing. You can see here I've overridden the reflect and update, which doesn't do anything. Just saves us uh, some processing. Cubes, as I was saying, uh, they have the uh, instance static mesh stuff. And that is a little on the complicated side, but not too bad. Create instance, destroy instance. 
got this uh, manager that I created, which figures out, you know, you're deleting this queue. Well, we want to get rid of that instance and things like that. In the blueprint, the floor is pretty simple. <laughs> it's got that uh, functionality to show and hide, which you always want. And the uh, materiality, which is essentially um, collision and physics being turned on and off. And here I'm just taking the uh, dimensions that were set and setting the scale. Uh, uh, you can see visibility is turned on and off inside the C++ class because it's all um, instanced. Here we've got another mess like in the last demo. Um, <laughs> no client physics. All right. Um, client smoothing. Um, I don't get in between the client and the server by default. So your UE4 functionality can can be standard if you so wish. Excuse me, but I do have this extra functionality, which is sort of client side interpolation slash smoothing um, for free. Essentially, you just get it built into the uh, to your functionality because of the functionality of the cluster. Um, so. You're smoothing on the client. Now, whether you, uh, boy, this is getting a bit more complicated than I want to get into, but essentially, um, the server is telling the client to turn collision and physics on and off based on whether the object, um, needs physics on or off essentially if they're about to collide into something then you want the physics on so that the client side reproduces the collision accurately in between the updates from the server um, if they're not bumping into anything they're just all by themselves then there's no reason to have collision and physics enabled um, so the server is able to uh, tell the client to toggle physics on and off for individual objects. Um, so this no client physics option basically says always turn physics off on the clients. And the thought was, and this hasn't been tested, but the theory is that turning the client uh, physics off entirely would save processing on the client and make it run better you'd get you wouldn't have these physics updates in between the network updates so it wouldn't look as good but you'd save a lot of processing on the client uh, as i said in theory and so here this is really just a way for me to test both conditions whether i've got toggle physics on and off or um no client physics at all. All right. And there were... <laughs> this is where I used to be setting the base color before I used instant static meshes. And here we're just setting the dimensions of the cube. Okay. And we're in the cluster now. This is that cube's demo running. We've got two 
gateways for the clients to come in on. We've got the master and we've got 12 workers. Each worker is handling uh, cubes. Six on one server, six on the other server. And you can see it's you know, there's quite a bit of physics interaction going on, so there's quite a bit of bandwidth. And I guess that's, I guess that's about it.